In this problem, we're given a single function, h of x, and we're asked to do four different problems. The first of one is the easy one. It's actually quite a bit different than the last three. h of 4 simply means to replace our input value uh, variable x with 4. And this would be pretty easy to explain, but I'm going to explain it in a way that is most conducive to explaining the following problems, not just the easiest one. So what you see me doing here is writing down the function h of x, but rather than using a letter of the alphabet to represent an input variable, which we always do in mathematics, uh, I'm just going to use a set of parentheses, because it's usually the parentheses that uh, screw students up in getting the wrong answer. Um, let me show you why that's necessary in a minute. And this one doesn't seem to be necessary. If I simply replace x with 4, uh, that gives me the question. The question is to find h of 4. Then you simply replace all the other input variables, variables with 4. Uh, this technique just basically writes the variable as a set of parentheses to remind students that oftentimes parentheses are necessary. Then simplifying gives 4 squared is 16 and 2 times 4 is 8, and then you have the subtract 4 at the end. Uh, I think I'd like to do this one first. 8 minus 4 is 4, then add the 16, you'll get 20. So the question is to find h of 4. The answer was simply 20. This simply means if you plug 4 in as an input into the function h, the output is 20. So the idea is we're keeping the function the same and we're simply evaluating it as a number and that's how you traditionally use functions when you first learn mathematics and then eventually later on you find out that sometimes, uh, let me keep that there, uh, we don't want to keep the original function, our intent is actually to change the function. So this next part right here, this one's done, is h of minus 3x. Uh, I could find h of minus 3x much the same as I found h of 4, simply replacing all the input variables with a set of parentheses and a blank space, and then saying, well, if I want the question h of minus 3x, I have to put a minus 3x here. Now I've invoked the question. Uh, then I just proceed to put minus 3x in all of the parentheses. But notice that if you didn't put the parentheses here, had I just taken x and wrote minus 3x and simply replaced x with minus 3x and then wrote the squared symbol, I would not get the correct answer that I see here. And the reason being is here the minus 3 is not being squared and here it is. And in fact, it actually should be being squared. So this is wrong. Uh, so I tell my students, whenever you make a substitution in math, put parentheses. Half the time you won't need it, but half the time you will. Uh, so here, let me finish the problem here. Uh, but notice we're going to get a new function. We're not keeping the function the same and evaluating it as a number. This is a completely different kind of problem. Our intent is to get a whole new equation. And I'm, I'm just going to simplify out the equation. We already have it here. The negative 3 is being squared, which is basically negative 3 times negative 3, or 9 x is being squared, uh, 2 times negative 3x is minus 6x, and then we have the subtract 4, and there's nothing that really can be simplified. You could try factoring it or something. Uh, in fact, I don't really think that that is being simplified. I just think that is being factored. Uh, so here we go. Um, I don't think of it as, um, you could think of it as if you plug in negative 3x as an input variable, you get this as an output. You could, but it's probably better described that we found an entire new function. This new function is different from the old, and the new function was obtained by taking the old function and doing a variable swap. Wherever we see the variable x, we replaced x with parentheses minus 3x. So I often write this on the board if I'm teaching in class. Uh, I could do a simple swap. Wherever you see x, replace it with parentheses minus 3x, and it's exactly what I'm going to do in the next part, except I'm going to replace it with a minus 1. I think the simplification is going to be slightly more difficult, but in the end, uh, I think step 3 is um, almost a little bit redundant, but perhaps it's just to help you remember uh, how to simplify, uh, you know, squaring out of binomials, what's going to happen here. So h of a minus 1 is going to be the same kind of problem. In fact, let me just for variety switch colors here. I'm getting a little tired of the purple. Uh, so if I was to replace a minus 1 in the parentheses, I'd get the question h of a minus 1. And as before, I would just re uh, write a minus 1 in all of the parentheses and simplify. So the only thing new here is the simplification involves a squaring of a binomial. If you don't know the shortcut, let me just do it real quick. a gets squared and then... Also, there's a middle term that students oftentimes forget here. Uh, it turns out that you have to multiply these two quantities, a and negative 1. If you multiply, you get negative a. Double that, get negative 2a. So you multiply the two quantities in the binomial, and double is the shortcut. 
And then the last thing gets squared. If you took negative 1 and squared it, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. If you were to practice that, you'd probably save yourself a bit of time. But let me show you how it really should be explained if you've never seen what that symbolism means before. A minus 1 squared, in fact, anything being squared, means to multiply by itself. And when you see it this way, you probably remember to FOIL. And FOIL means to multiply the first terms. A times A is A squared. Do the outside terms. A times negative 1 is negative A. Remember how I taught you the shortcut to multiply the two terms? That's because of this. Uh, a times negative 1 is negative A. But because it's the binomial, because you're squaring a binomial, you get another copy of that. Right? They're the same thing. So you're going to get a negative, another negative 1 times A. You get two copies of it. So you end up getting two negative A's. And that's why I had you double it after multiplication. So negative A minus A is negative 2A. You double it. Um, oh, excuse me, don't double it. <laughs> I'm not doing the shortcut down here. Uh, then finally, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And then finally, you'd simplify this down to get the same thing I got when I did the, the shortcut. So it's up to you whether you want to practice that shortcut with different problems, but I need to proceed to simplify. So here I'm distributing the 2. You have 2 times a. And then you have 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And you have a subtract 4. And you do need to combine like terms at the end. Um, some teachers will make you copy the beginning and every stage so that you remember what this is. Uh, h of a minus 1 is all this. Then what is h of a minus 1? Some teachers let you just skip this until the very end. Um, the problem with skipping at the very end is students forget to put it at the end if they leave it out throughout the problem. Uh, here I have an a squared. It's the only term being squared. I have a minus 2a and a plus 2a, which gives me 0. Uh, so you could write plus 0, but we don't usually write the additive identity. Uh, then we have a 1 and then subtract 2 is negative 1, and then if you were to subtract 4, you would get uh, negative 5. So you basically end up with a squared uh, minus 5, and I'm not going to factor it. In fact, it would look pretty weird if I did uh, there. It does factor it, but not over whole numbers. Uh, so I get that this new function, h of a minus 1, uh, simplifies out to be a squared minus 5. So doing the last problem is going to be the most convoluted one. Still not that bad. You just um, probably just leaves a lot of places where uh, you could make mistakes. But the logic is no different than what I've done before, except for the in the last problem, let me check this. these two off, we're done with them. Uh, in the last problem here, it really is two problems in one. You're, you, they're making use of the function h of x twice. So if you just solved this piece and ignored that, what would that be? Well, it would be the same as doing the other problems. I would replace the input variable with x plus 1, and that would give me h of x plus 1. So let's just do that. And I'm, I'm going to um, write it down in um, unsimplified form at first just to just to remember. In fact, maybe I'll just leave this so that I have this here. And then I'll do the second step down there. So all of this is h of x plus 1. Where you see this, it can be replaced with all of this here. Now I either have a, uh, I have a choice. I either multiply my function h of x by 3, take the result and subtract. That's the way I'm going to do it. But it might be easier for some students to actually multiply h of x by negative 3. And then since you already took care of the negative, you could add the two uh, results. Uh, but what I'm going to think of it is I'm going to be finding 3 times h of x, and then I'm going to subtract these two uh, quantities. So what would 3 times h of x be? Well, they're not manipulating the function. They're simply saying use h of x. Well, they gave me h of x to be x squared plus 2x minus 4. So you could simply say that h of x is x squared uh, plus 2x minus 4. It would make absolutely no sense in this video for me to say, uh, you know, the, the other method of leaving blank spaces and say, hey, let's replace x with x. It doesn't do anything replacing x with x. It keeps the function the same. So here's me just copying h of x. The problem is that you might be tempted to just put a 3 there now. And that is not correct at all. What you've done is you haven't multiplied the function h of x by 3. You've only multiplied the first term of h of x by 3. It turns out you have to multiply all the terms. 3 times h of x means multiply everything in h of x by 3. If it's a polynomial, each term must be multiplied by 3. So most students actually just jump to saying it's 3x squared plus 6x minus 12. 
Uh, but since I'm writing this out, what you could do is just use parentheses here. Again, you know, I technically I made a substitution. I replaced the function notation as h of x with this stuff. And I always tell my students when you make a substitution, put parentheses around what you're substituting. This would be an example. All right, so that was a lot uh, to say. Just to simply say, when you multiply h by 3, uh, make sure you do it to all terms, and that would give you 3x squared. Uh, then you multiply the 3 in a distributive property, you'd get 6x. And then 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. So if you want, this quantity is what 3 times h of x is. So the idea is I have the two pieces in the question. Just as long as you didn't think you're going to do this all in one step, you'll probably be fine. We found h of x plus 1. That was all of this. We found 3 times h of x. That was this. Now it's saying take the two things and subtract them. So I'm hoping I'll have enough room here. But let me just copy down without simplifying what h of x plus 1 was. Probably could skip this part of the video. I think you know where I'm going here. But just copy that down and then... 3 times h of x was this. It was 3x squared uh, plus 6x minus 12. Here we're going to run to the same problem as before. Um, the problem is if you just say, well, we're supposed to just subtract these two things and just put a subtract in here, there's an issue here. So the idea is if you do that, if you just put a subtract here now, what you've done is you didn't really subtract 3 times h of x. You've only subtracted the first term of 3 times h of x. So again, this is where you could say, well, technically I made a substitution here when I replaced h of x plus 1 with all of this. So you could have put parentheses. And then now I made this substitution, so we need another set. So that's one way to think about it. Main, when making a substitution, put parentheses. But it turns out there's no need for parentheses around uh, the first, uh, th this thing, because this expression uh, does not need parentheses, because if you did put parentheses around it, the only thing in front of the parentheses would be a positive 1, and if you want to multiply through by a positive 1, go ahead, but it doesn't change anything. Here is the part where you need parentheses, and again, a lot of students would probably just skip this step and maybe even distribute it as they write it and change the signs. But in short, whenever you subtract something and it has more than one term, uh, then you must you know, distribute that sign through each term. A term is anything being separated by an addition or subtraction symbol. Uh, let me work on this off to the side because I'm going to run a room. Again, if you know the shortcut, x gets squared and 1 gets squared, and the common mistake is to leave that. But it turns out that there's a middle term that you can get by multiplying these two terms and doubling. 1 times x is x. If you double that, you get 2x. And my high school teacher made us do like 150 of these so that you'd never do it the long way. But here's the long way. If you take x plus 1 squared, write down what it means. It means to multiply it by itself. And then uh, you probably were taught to FOIL. And FOIL works for bi you know binomials. So x times x is x squared. Here's the part where you get x times 1. And that's what motivated that shortcut of multiplying the two things together. The fact that you're going to get another copy of it uh, is why I told you to uh, double the result after we multiplied. 1 times x is x, double it to get 2x, and that's where you get the 2x from right here. And then finally, in the foiling process, you have 1 times 1 is 1. So if you work it out the long way, you get x squared plus 2x plus 1. Uh, if you learn the shortcut, the problem shortcuts is when you're not good at it, you make mistakes. So anyway, there it is. Uh, if you distribute the 2, you'd get 2x. Also distribute the 2... Uh, to the 1, so that would give you 2 times 1 is 2. We have the minus 4 there, and this negative out here uh, basically changes all the signs on uh, the inside function here. You can think of it as you're multiplying through by a negative 1 if you want, and that would change the signs. You have minus 3x squared, minus 6x plus 12. Almost done. It's kind of a long problem. Now we need to combine like terms. We have x squared and minus 3x squared gives negative 2x squared. So those are the squared terms. And then if you want to look at all the terms that involve x, you have 2x and you have another 2x, that's 4x. And then if you take 4x and subtract 6x, then you would get minus uh, 2x. Write that down. And then finally, if you just look at the constants, um, you have the, the number... Uh, 1 here, add it to 2, you get 3, subtract 4, you get a, a negative 1, and then finally, if you took that negative 1 and added it to 12, you would get 11. Uh, so my final result, and I didn't even re leave myself enough room to write the question, uh, the question is, I guess maybe I could squeeze it in here, is 
Um, what would you get if you change the function h of x to h of x plus 1, and then after that subtracted three times uh, h of x? So don't forget where this function came from. That's just the set of directions that tells you where it came from. Uh, it would be equal to uh, this. So hopefully I didn't lose you too badly in the video, and I hope it helped.